But the song isn't a bad song. No, it's not. Either. I mean, I'm only cussing. Who am I cussing? Tony, because he was a phony. Standard. <laughs> Journey's not been an overnight situation. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's been pretty difficult, man, like, to get in here. So, for those who don't know, explain to them how you got to where you are today with music. Um, well, I took a lot of risks and um, I never had a plan B. I dropped out of college halfway through, I was doing my A levels, and, um, and I auditioned for a band. I didn't know if I'd got the place for this band before I dropped out of college. So the fact that I dropped out and then went and auditioned for a band was a bit silly in retrospect, because it's like, if I didn't get that place in the band, I don't know what I would have been doing, but it just so happened, as fate would have it, I, the band liked what I was doing and they, they took me on board. And so I started to tour with this group called Laid Black back in my hometown in Bristol. And we toured all around the nation and we played some amazing gigs and I started to write with the band. And I was with them for three years and then I left the band and I was working with local producers and performing with my friend who was now my keyboard player in my band. We'd perform around Bristol and, and wherever we could get a gig basically. And then um, I was doing loads of different part-time jobs. It was really difficult to try and keep your dream alive when life is hard and money is tight and everything else is, is happening. And um, My manager found me at a gig that I was doing in Bristol. It was a night called Sunday Night Soul, where a lot of soul singers and, and uh, musicians would come down and jam. And he saw me performing, and then um, we moved to London. Well, I moved to London, because me and my manager were going back and forth to London. And it was getting really stupid. Like, I'd get back to Bristol, I'd have two hours sleep, and then I'd be working in my part-time job as a receptionist. And then straight away, I'd go back to London. And it was just exhausting, so I moved to London, and, um, I just stayed in people's houses, stayed on, in the studio on sofa beds, on the floor. I was I was an, a gypsy, I was like a modern day gypsy with like one mission and I just never really stopped to think about what I was doing. It was just, this was my goal, there's no two ways about it. Like, if I got to sleep underneath that chair tonight and I'm just make I'm just make the best out of it and tomorrow I'm gonna write a killer song that may get me signed. It was that mentality, you know, so. Yeah, it was definitely a grind, but um, definitely worthwhile. And I've grown and I've learned so much and I've, through it all, met so many different people. And lots of people have really supported me and helped me. And it just goes to show that um, it really does take a village to raise a child. Like, if it wasn't for people that put a roof over my head and, and fed me and like really believed in what I was doing, I really wouldn't be here. So I'm very lucky. And what's interesting about that is, the dedication because <coughs> there must have been times when you thought loads of times yeah. was there any point though where you thought I'm just I'm gonna give up because I know that financially it's not mm. easy you know when no. you're trying to fund music it's you know, hard in London yeah. as well yeah, I'm London's from Bristol where like even going out on the town drinks are so much cheaper everything's cheaper transport in London is really expensive I didn't even have a job so I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't afford to even get the bus sometimes, so I, I got my bike from Bristol and I'd cycle from like Tottenham, where I was staying at the time, to Camden, where I was working part-time in a bar. I'd cycle, that took an hour and a half, and I'd cycle back, and then I'd have studio the next day. It was like, it was a grind, and it was um, really difficult, and my manager had a lot of faith, and has a lot of faith in me, and he would take out credit cards to fund me, to give me a bit of money so I could get the train, or so I could have something to eat when I was at the studio. So everything was budget, and everything <laughs> was tight. And, um, yeah. Letter to my ex. When was that written? That was written, that was written last year. Last year? Mm. So I presume obviously that is, all those lyrics there are, are true. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, <laughs> so when when you when you when you write that type of um, song, um, for you is it almost it like is it a release? Does it help you get over yeah. the actual situation? Songwriting is always really cathartic for me because 
I write about what's real, I write about what I know. And so to know that potentially your lyrics and your experiences could be out there for the whole world to engage with, it feels amazing. And writing letters to my ex was definitely, um, it was a release and it was, uh, I gained a lot of closure from writing that song. I had no idea again that it was gonna be released. Um, so it's like I just pour, I pour my heart and soul into every song I do because you just never know which song's gonna, gonna con you know, connect with people. And um, yeah. For the song, do you get a phone call from the ex? No. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm on really good terms with most of my exes. Really. And like the ex, like loads of people have said to me, "Oh, who's Tony and who's Curtis?" Because they're the two exes I'm talking about in the song. But I don't actually have any exes called Tony or Curtis. Oh, yeah, you know. So it's like the song actually is about all of, not all of my exes, but little lines relate to specific exes. Um, but none of them were on blast, so none of them you would ever give, know it was about them. You know, them so it's a very cunning yeah. situation now, you know. It's, um, but the song isn't a bad song. No, it's not. Really. I mean, I'm only cussing. Who am I cussing? Tony, because he was a phony. Standard. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, you know, it's more it's more about talking about when you're in a relationship and sometimes that other person can suffocate you and not really want you to they don't want to let go of you because they know that you're gonna fly and like they, they're That's afraid. What you're about. I'm a spot yeah, now, isn't it? yeah, I'm yeah like I am very free spirited and so um I can't really have somebody try and hold me back. It's just not gonna go work. Out again. Let to my ex. And also um, Because I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> get out, get letter to my ex, okay? If you've ever been in a relationship with someone who's tried to hold you back and you know that you were born to fly, <laughs> then you should get letter to my ex because um let's support let's support real artists here. Let's support people who have grinded it out and really know music and really love music and this is just the beginning, so you know support real artists i'm a real artist i'm here to make music for you and i hope that you're feeling it